the cars I drove as a motoring journalist in the 1980s, the Alfa Romeo GTV6 was one of the worst. It was deeply uncomfortable. If there was a second gear, I never found it. It was ferociously expensive to run, and though it was a hatchback, the rear seats didn't fold down. I bought one, and there are three reasons why I'm not completely certifiable. One, I think it's a very pretty car. Two, it has a glorious engine. And three, and perhaps most important of all, Alfa Romeos are somehow special. Let me tell you a few things about the company. It's one of the oldest car firms in the world. It was formed in 1910. Enzo Ferrari began his career with Alfa Romeo before leaving to set up his own, perhaps more successful operation. In the 30s and particularly the 50s, Alfa was a very dominant force in motor racing. So much so in the 50s, in one Grand Prix, their car had such a commanding lead that the driver pulled into the pits on the penultimate lap and had it polished so that it would look smart when he crossed the finishing line. In the 60s, Alfa was all about glamour. Dustin Hoffman, The Graduate, and so on. But then in the 70s, it was nationalised, and we in Britain know all about what happens when you do that to a car industry. Now, a couple of years ago, Fiat brought Alfa back into the private sector and made it their number one priority to get Alfa Romeo racing again. The Italian Touring Car Championship was won this year by one of these, a 155 Cloverleaf 4. Now, I'll admit it looks just like any other 155, a sensible four-door saloon that looks like it's been styled by someone with a fondness for origami. But beneath the angular lines of this particular model beats a very Latin, very lovable heart. <laughs> Although it looks like the sort of car your old geography teacher would drive, it is basically a Lancia Delta Integrale in drag. And the Integrale has won the World Rally Championship six times. So, what we have here, trundling round the streets of Birmingham, is a fire-spitting monster in a city suit. Like the Escort Cosworth, the Cloverleaf 4 has a 16-valve turbocharged 2-litre motor and four-wheel drive. But it isn't exactly what you'd call a stripped-out racer. The interior exudes what the Germans call cavolity, with all the control surfaces, the steering wheel and the gear lever coated in leather. Everything moves about electrically, there's air conditioning, a CD player, and for when you get bored with trying to get everywhere before you set off, adjustable suspension. You choose how comfortable the ride home should be. The simple fact of the matter is that you're choosing between quite comfortable and really very comfortable indeed. Not a bad achievement, considering those low-profile tyres. But of course it was built primarily to go racing, and that means it has to be as nimble as a nimble thing. Even with a completely ham-fisted buffoon like me at the wheel, the 155 is always good fun. The power steering works well, the grip is outstanding, the turning is sharp, and if you get a bit carried away, easy when you have 190 horsepower and a private environment like this to play with, anti-lock brakes are there to help out. Driving the Cloverleaf 4 is like taking a spaniel puppy for a walk. It's forever straining at the leash, urging you to go that little bit faster. It's a hoot. It's a laugh. It reminds you what it was that got you interested in cars in the first place. This is everything the Toyota Corolla isn't. If you could liken all cars to school children, which of course you can't, but I'm going to anyway, this would be the one at the back, flicking paper darts at the teacher. Probably not everyone's cup of tea. 
In fact, at £19,000, it definitely isn't everyone's cup of tea. But for those who are fed up to the back teeth with tedious Eurobox yawnmobiles, this is a breath of fresh air, a tonic, a shot of pure adrenaline. You may like your Ford, but you can love your Alpha. However, all is not sweetness and light. Unlike the other cheaper 155s, the Cloverleaf 4 is only available with its steering wheel on the left-hand side. And this can be a nuisance at toll gates or car park checkouts, or even drive-through fast food joints. Yeah, can I have uh, a huge Mac and some even huger fries, please? Would you like a few drinks? No, just a Coke, thanks. McDonald's can't let you that large. Yeah, large. Would you like the apple pie? <laughs> no, nothing else. The way round the problem, if you can ever get the talking litter bin to shut up, is to think laterally.